Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, Section 3.3, Properties of Addition and Multiplication Lesson. Pause while you write Section 3.3 Lesson in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. Today's objective is use properties of addition and multiplication to show that expressions are equivalent. Pause while you copy the following key term, definition, and example exactly as it appears into your notebook. Equivalent expressions are expressions that have the same value. For example, 7 plus 4 and 4 plus 7 are equivalent expressions because they both equal 11. Today we'll be starting on page 128 in your math textbook. We're going to start by copying the key ideas at the top of the page into your math notebook. The commutative property is when you change the order of add-ends or factors and that does not change the sum or the product. So be sure to copy the words and the numbers. So copy the definition and the examples exactly as they appear here into your notebook. And then copy the definition for associative properties. So that is when you change the grouping of add-ends or factors and that does not change the sum or the product. So, that, so that's when you change how things are grouped in order to make things easier to multiply or to add and it doesn't change your answer. So be sure you copy all of this that's in the key idea box into your math notebook. Now we'll take a look at example one using properties to write equivalent expressions. And remember from your note taking, equivalent expressions have the same value. So let's look at letter A simplify the expression 7 plus 12 plus x. First we're going to use the associative property of addition because it's hard to add 12 plus x and it doesn't matter what order we add things in so we're going to group the 7 plus 12 together because that's much easier to add. So we use the associative property of addition to group the 7 plus 12 and add those two together because that's much easier to add. So 7 plus 12 equals 19 and then we add the 19 plus x. So whenever we find out what x is we'll add that on. So we simplified that and so it makes it so there are fewer terms. That's what makes it simplified. 7 plus 12 turns into 19 and our simplified expression is 19 plus x. Now we're going to simplify the expression 6.1 plus x plus 8.4. So we're going to use the commutative property of addition. We're going to change the order of things. We're going to move the 8.4 and the 6.1 so they're next to each other. And then we're going to change the grouping so that the parentheses are around the 6.1 and the 8.4. We're going to add those and that gives us 14.5. So we changed our expression so that it's now x plus 14.5. Finally, we're going to simplify the expression 5 times 11y and we use the associative property of multiplication. So all we're really doing is stretching this out a little bit and making it 5 times 11 times y. So 5 times 11 equals 55 and then we stick the y on the end so it's 55y. Now let's take a look at the study tip box. It tells us one way to check whether expressions are equivalent is to evaluate each expression for any value in the, in the variable. So in example 1a we could put 2 in there and see 
if it works with the original expression they gave us and also with what they we ended up with. So if we put in 2 into the original expression, then we would end up with 21. And if we put it into the 19 plus x, we would also end up with 21. So that works. So a way to check your work to see if you're coming up with equivalent expressions is to use a number instead of a variable and to see if it comes up with the same amount. As we move on to page 129, I'm going to ask you to write the key ideas at the top of the page again in your math notebook. The first key idea is addition property of zero, and that just set, tells us that the sum of any number and zero is that number, so that's nothing new. Just be sure you write it as a formal property in your notebook, and be sure you write the numbers and the algebra along with it and then the multiplication properties of 0 and 1. So the product of any number and 0 is 0, so that means when you multiply a number by 0, you get 0. And the product of any number and 1 is that number. So any number times 1 is itself, is what that's saying. So be sure you write these in your math notebook so you'll have them. And let's look at example 2. Using properties to write equivalent expressions, A says to simplify the expressions 9 times 0 times P. So if we use the associative property of multiplication and we group 9 times 0 and we multiply that, 9 times 0 equals 0 because of our multiplication property of 0 then 0 times p also equals 0. And then letter b, we're asked to simplify the expression 4.5 times r times 1. So we're going to use the associative property of multiplication, 4.5 times r times 1. We're going to regroup things and put r times 1 together. And so we know that that turns out to be just r because anything because r times 1 just equals r so we have 4.5 times r for our final simplified expression now let's look at example 3 a real life application you and six friends play on a basketball team a sponsor paid $100 for the league fee X dollars for each player's t-shirt and $68.25 for trophies. We're going to write the expression for the total amount the sponsor paid. So we look at the common error box to remember that you and six friends equals seven people, not six people, because you have to remember that you are a person too. So we're going to add the league fee the cost of the t-shirts and the cost of the trophies. So the sponsor paid $100 for the league fee. 7x is the cost of the t-shirts because there are seven players. And $68.25 is the cost of the trophies. So our expression is 7x plus 100 plus 68.25. We used the commutative property of addition to get our two constants together because it's easier to add that way. And when we add those up, they're, they equal $168.25. So our new expression is 7x plus $168.25. So an expression for the total amount is 7x plus 168 and 25 hundredths. Your assignment for this lesson is to complete the following on your own questions. They're also located on pages 128 and 129 of your textbook. Show your work and be prepared to share during our next class. Please remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You need to complete your exit slip back at the website. 
You also need to come to our next class prepared with the journal pages that we did during the flip lesson or any other work that we did for the flip lesson completed. You also need to be prepared with any work that was assigned in the flip lesson completed and be ready with any questions you have for your teacher and as always have a good attitude. We'll see you tomorrow in class. Remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You must complete your exit slip. You must come to our next class prepared with your journal pages or any other work that we did during the flipped lesson completed. And you need to be prepared with any work that was assigned during the flipped lesson completed. Be prepared with any questions you have about the content of the flipped lesson and a good attitude. We'll see you in class tomorrow.